So now I'm standing up my pencil and just refining some of these edges of the details that I was trying to emphasize. I also have a, a really cool tool that you can use if you're using pencil. It's called a blending stump. So one of the things you can do with the blending stump is kind of help get rid of all of those hard lines. I'm gonna use my blending stump to begin kind of showing a range of value. Now I'm taking the, the graphite from those darker areas and I'm kind of dragging it over to the other areas in the image of Michael Myers. So the objective is to, instead of just coloring in a person or, or shading the whole thing, I am showing a range of value. And this little um, blending stump is a really great tool to help get that information on there nice and quick without you know taking too much of your time. And it also blends so nicely and shows that gradual transition from dark to light. And that again is, is one of the, the important keys to making things look three dimensional. just kind of blocking in some more of those wrinkles that I see in the clothing. I know the picture is difficult to identify those wrinkles, but they're there. And if I'm using a blending stump, sometimes, you know, those details disappear that I originally got on the page. So I'm just going to go back and re-add any details it started to kind of go away and again whenever i am applying pencil with a or graphite with a pencil i'm going to turn it over on its side and i'm going to use that to shade as opposed to pressing hard and making hard outlines across my paper another technique that i mentioned earlier on my value scale I mentioned crosshatch and hatching. Crosshatch and hatching are another way to apply value or dark areas. So in my image, I'm also going to use a little bit of crosshatch. So I already did some blending in there, and now I'm going to go back on top, and I am actually adding more value or details in a crosshatch technique. So again, what I'm doing is now I'm sanding up my pencil and I'm just kind of bringing in some more of those details. So now you can see that crosshatch a little bit better. Just another way to apply value using pencil. This same technique can easily be used with pens, gel pens, markers, colored pencils. So instead of the concept where you believe that you color things in and make the entire thing one solid color, I want you to be able to apply different materials and be able to create that sense of depth. So using a crosshatch, now you have multiple different techniques that you can use. And when you're using it, you are creating interest in that, in that drawing that you're working on.
So if you look at the image now, you can see a pretty distinct um, outline that no longer looks just like outlines. It's, it's more becoming a three-dimensional image as opposed to just hard outlines like a cartoon. So again, one of, your, one of your tasks when you're learning to draw is to identify a light source. Where's the light coming from? In the picture, you can see Michael Myers has a light source that comes from behind him, which is creating that glow with his hair. But I can tell from his clothing that there's a light source that comes in from the left-hand side, which is also casting shadows onto the right side of his body. So when you're working, you just want to, you know, try to identify that first. And that's going to be, you know, a really quick and easy way to start making things look um, like they're three-dimensional. And they'd like they come out at you from that paper. So as an artist, you have this, you know, remarkable ability to be able to tell a story with your, with the artwork that you create. And one of the things that you are learning to do is be able to make things look as you see them. So sometimes in your mind, you might be looking at um, something like Michael Myers and all you see is a dark outfit. We are inclined to especially if you haven't had a lot of drawing classes, you're inclined to just want to color it in, all one color. So my job is to help you identify ways that you can bring dimension to the objects or the images of people or things and make them look as we see them in reality. And one of the nice things about using pencil is that you're going to be able to you know, if you make a mistake, you can always erase it. In fact, another technique that I have is actually drawing with an eraser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just block in a lot of pencil right in here using a crosshatch technique. But I know I have a bit of a highlight right in here. Now I'm going to turn my pencil over and I'm going to draw with my eraser. And what I'm doing is instead of just erasing, as you know it, where you're rubbing side to side really quickly, I'm actually using that eraser to bring back those highlights in those areas. So that's another technique to know. So now you've reviewed um, gradient value, uh, the range from dark to light. You have now kind of understood uh, crosshatch is another technique used. And you've learned how to use a blending stump to be able to help you kind of move that graphite across the page. And also just using a eraser to help you, you know, bring back values that maybe you accidentally blocked out or intentionally use those types of tools to, you know, like an eraser, intentionally use that for your highlights. Lots of artists do that. They might go in with all the darks.